All right, the last video, the last video is merely a concept check, but the other one was running too long. So what I want you to do is given a couple of pieces of information about these five substances, namely what its formula is and what its melting point is, I want you to classify these as either a molecular solid, an ionic solid, a metallic solid, or a network solid. So hit pause if you need to. All right, so there's a few ways you can go about this. Some of these you can kind of figure out from the formula and the fact that some of the classifications don't have a whole lot of examples. Um, so let's look at the first one, carbon dioxide. So that is a metal, I'm sorry, that is a non-metal, non-metal combination. And it sublimes at about 78 degrees below zero Celsius, which is, remember sublimation is going directly from the solid to the gas phase. But anyway, um, whether you go from solid to liquid or directly from solid to gas, the solid phase is no longer favored at temperatures above 78 degrees below zero Celsius. So this is a fairly low temperature. This is a covalent compound. Both of those indicate that this is probably a molecular solid. So, and in this case, it would be the induced dipole interactions that are holding neighboring carbon dioxide molecules together to form a solid. So if we look at bromine, um, Br2, again, this is a non-metal, non-metal combination. So this is a covalent compound. This also has a fairly low melting point, you know, seven, about seven degrees below zero Celsius. Same idea um, that this is a non-polar covalent compound. So this again would be just dipole, dipole, I'm sorry, induced dipole, induced dipole, or London dispersion interactions, holding those together. Iron, um, pretty straightforward, namely that A, it's a metallic element, so that's a dead giveaway. And the fact that it's got a reasonably high melting point as well at about 1800 degrees Celsius also indicates that, yeah, this is probably a metallic solid. Diamond, so again, this has an exceptionally high melting point and it's one of the few um, network solids that there are. So that one's gonna be network solid. And last but not least, magnesium oxide. So this is a metal, non-metal pairing, a very strong indicator of an ionic compound, um, which would make it an ionic solid and the very high melting point of 2,800 degrees also backs that up. So that is probably an example of an ionic compound. All right, next question. So I've got a picture here. And so what I want you to do is tell me what type of solid it is from the molecular levels and what are, what are the interactions that are holding it together. And you will note that from what this is telling you that this thing here consists of two nitrogen atoms bonded to each other. So much like the dibromine example here, this is a covalently bound molecule. So this is a molecular solid. And given the fact that N2 is perfectly nonpolar, the only things holding it together would be London dispersion interactions. So these are the kind of questions I could ask you and will on an upcoming quiz. Um, so that's today's lesson and we will see you next time. And don't for, and just to wrap up, that was lithium playing at the beginning. All right, see you next time.